Hello, hello everyone. It's me, Arden Lee, and in today's video, I'm going to be answering one of the questions from one of the members of the Repatterning Parlor, which by the way is the group that I moderate. So if you don't belong yet, go ahead and check out the link in the description box and come and say hi. And this question that I'm going to be answering today is, how do I find joy even when I'm in overwhelming pain? And I'm gonna say this, there is a reason that pain is so confronting. Pain is as confronting <laughs> and attention getting as it is precisely because it needs to get our attention to let us know that something is wrong. That something in our environment or in how our beliefs are interpreting our environment. Something is causing us or threatening to cause us harm or has caused us harm. And we are responding to the very legitimate reality of that situation. Even if the pain we're feeling is only from an inner perception of a threat of harm, it doesn't matter. The pain is still real and there's still a reason that we are perceiving a threat. So whether it is truly external or internal doesn't necessarily matter. It matters in how we deal with the situation it matters in saying, do I need to look at myself and where I'm being triggered into thinking the past is happening in the present, even though it's not, versus do I have an external factor that I need to manage or adjust my relationship to? It matters in discerning a course of action, but in terms of dealing with the pain itself, all of that pain is legitimate. I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say that when we're in overwhelming pain, we shouldn't be trying to find joy. because our pain wants to be witnessed and it wants to be listened to. I'm going to say that what we need to find, what it is advisable that we find when we are in moments of overwhelming pain is hope. To feel joy is to feel joy in the present moment. And when we're in excruciating pain, there is a reason that our bodies are alerting us. And that's something that we don't want to ignore. There's something really brilliant <laughs> in um, this wonderful book by my dear friend, A.V. Flox, Disrupting the Bystander, When Me Too Happens Among Friends. And what it says, <laughs> I didn't think to look it up and mark the page before, uh, <laughs> before hopping on and making the video. Um, but essentially, what she says in this book is that our bodies have these remarkable security systems to them. We can be so obsessed with putting in security systems to our homes, to our computers, information security, etc., etc., and yet <laughs> when it comes to our own bodies, we feel this desire, this conditioned desire to appear tough mentally, to resist our feelings, to decide that uh, our feelings are not um, important. Here we go. <laughs> we have vibrant security and preparedness cultures 
We take pride in the security systems we install for our homes. At the same time, we treat feelings, especially hurt, fearful, and uncomfortable feelings like they're weaknesses. It's almost as if we don't realize that feelings are the security systems we have for our bodies. And it does not get more state of the art than our ability to take in hundreds and thousands of cues and react in fractions of, of a second. The human body is a sophisticated system comprised of countless instruments of detection and feelings are essentially its push notifications. It's a shame we're not taught to inhabit these systems efficiently and pay attention to the push notifications from our body like we do from those from our phones. In fact, it's often the opposite. We think being fearless is some kind of power. We think it's a form of mastery to ignore our awareness of hunger, tiredness, the need to use the bathroom. We think it's strong to push through our misgivings without paying them any attention. We have an incredible security system and yet we pride ourselves on ignoring its alarm and being ignorant and disdainful of it. I love that couple of paragraphs so very much. When you're feeling pain, I'm not going to tell you to find joy. I'm going to tell you to find hope. And the difference with that is hope is an understanding and a faith and a decision to believe that you can feel joy again in the future. Hope is what allows us to get through our pain and makes it possible for us to persevere through the process of metabolizing, understanding, and alchemizing our pain, grieving it and releasing it. If we're in overwhelming pain, it's telling us to pay attention to something. Without knowing the specifics of the situation, it's difficult to advise on how to pay attention to it. But our pain is often what teaches us our greatest lessons. When we look at places where we've been hurt, we can see where someone may have crossed a boundary. We can see where we didn't feel honored or respected. We see where something is happening that we don't want, which gives us an opportunity to see what we do want. Pain can be very useful because even if all we do when we respond to being in pain is to say, I don't want this. I want the opposite of this. That is deeply, deeply, deeply useful. And believing in the possibility for us to reach the opposite of the circumstance that is causing us pain, that's hope. And that's what we want and need to have when we're in overwhelming pain. So I'm not going to tell you, find some way to find joy when you're in overwhelming pain. I'm going to gently advise that you sit with that pain and ask what it's trying to teach you. Make space for it. Make space for anger. Make space for fear. Make space for grief. Make space for sadness. All of it is there for a lesson. It sucks. It's not fun. And certainly it is important to take care of ourselves through these processes. And if you do find places where you can find joy, little pockets of joy in overwhelming swaths of pain, then yes, I encourage you to take those moments, those moments of grace, you know, seeing your little six year old nephew when you're at a funeral for your grandfather little pocket of joy in a large situation of overwhelming pain. Sharing an ice cream cone with someone you trust and care about when they're supporting you through a difficult process, there's another pocket of joy. But I don't want to tell you to feel something that's going to, I'm not going to tell you to force yourself or to make deep efforts trying to feel something that you don't feel. Especially when you're dealing with pain. Because pain really wants to be felt. Pain wants to be felt and pain wants to be listened to. 
and the more painful it is, that's the more it's trying to get your attention. And we give it our attention so that we can transmute it. So if you can't find joy when you're in overwhelming pain, ask yourself if you can find hope. Hope is the understanding that pain is transient. That pain is not something that we are a slave to, but rather something that we can have a relationship to in a way that ultimately serves us. And that we can have faith that we're going to get to a place where we can release it where we can be complete with it so that we can create that space for joy once again and that's hope hope is faith in future joy and as av also talks about <laughs> in disrupting the bystander hope is a discipline hope is a practice and it's one of the most useful ones that you'll ever come across. So if you're in pain, it's okay. If you can't feel joy, it's okay. Faith in your future joy is hope. And that's what you're going to need to get through and get to the other side. Thank you guys. Hope this is helpful.